Okay, I'm going to call this video Clues of the Edomites. Because that's the elephant in the room who are the Edomites today since they're being exposed. Clues of the Edomites. And a major clue comes out of, besides the Bible, this is outside of the Bible. And it's uh, basically this information can be construed with the Bible. OK, uh, this is from a document entitled The Master Plan of the Illuminated Rothschilds. Ron Patton interviews Marion Knox. Now, uh, that term Rothschild, if you go into the origin of it, it comes from Mayam Shell Bauer. Uh, this is an easy research that you can find on Google comes from Maya M. Bauer, who was on the scene around the mid-1700s. And he was a junior banker with the uh, firm of, the firm known as the Oppenheimer, the Oppenheimer Banking Family. And then he, he went out on his own, set up his own thing, Maya M. Bauer, And he became a money lender. Now that, Last name Bauer means peasant. So that's kind of ironic because that's exactly what they're going to be, right? The Rothschild family, which their name goes back to Bauer. That's exactly what they're going to be when their power is taken from them <clears throat> by the Heavenly Father's only begotten son, Yahweh Shai and the angels. Because that's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do the one the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he's coming with a host of angels to destroy Esau's society, which begins with the Rothschilds. This is their, this is basically, this planet Earth is being ruled by the Rothschilds and the rest of the banking families. This is their kingdom. Okay, that's why they damn near own everything. I'm talking about the Rothschild family, the most powerful family on the planet Earth. And they are, they are indeed so-called white people. There's no doubt about that. So when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to destroy their society. Okay? So their power is going to be revoked. Okay? So going back to that term Rothschild, because I want to give you a little information on that term, where it came, the origin of it. So it came from a man by the name of Mayam Shelbauer who changed his name to Rothschild or Red Shield. Because what happened was he was a, um, he lived in, uh, if I remember correctly, this is information coming out of the book Secrets of the Federal Reserve by Eustace Mullins, right? And um, he lived in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, the address was 148 Judengast Street, 148 Judengast Street. And uh, like I said, he was a money lender. And to advertise his business, all you got, all you got to do is Google the, the dynamics of money lending back then during those days. This is uh, in the mid-1700s. Um, to advertise his business, he put up a red shield over his door. So after a while, he became known as the Red Shield. He stopped being known as Bauer, and he became known as the Red Shield. Now, Red Shield in German, because that's uh, what he spoke, uh, German, came out of that area, Frankfurt, Germany. Red Shield in German is Rothschild, or Rothschild, which a child is a shield to their family. Or to its family. A child is a shield, to, especially to the father. Especially if the father has sons. The sons would be a shield to the father. Okay, so Roh, Roh shield or Rothschilds literally means red shield. Now, what's interesting, and that's why I say it's ironic, is because Esau, when you go back to um, the description of Esau, Right, Genesis 25 and 25. Let's go right to it. Genesis 25 and 25. It says, 
And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. All right. Red as in the color of his skin because uh, the fact that uh, the skin was red, the skin was devoid of pigment, melanin, melanin pigment. So the blood that's within the body shows forth through the skin, giving the skin its color, as in red. Okay? That's what the Edomites are suffering from. They're suffering from a lack of melanin, a lack of pigment. Because we came from the ground. Now what color is the ground, the deep, rich part of the soil where we came from? What color is it? Very dark brown or dark brown. Okay, so if anything, the Edomites are the oddballs of the planet Earth. And, and by the time this society is destroyed, that's going to be known. Okay, it's being known now, but it's going to be known on an even greater scale. Because this, this truth is coming out and there's nothing the top elites of Esau can do to stop it. It's manifest destiny. It's the end of Esau's rulership. It's the end of his age. That's what we're fast approaching. So the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they call his name Esau. Esau. The reason why he was called Esau is Isaac, his father, when he looked at the baby, he said, Aishashua. Isaac spoke Hebrew. So when he looked at the baby, he said, Aishashua in the, in the Hebrew. Aishashua is Esau, which means he wasted. What was wasted on the baby? The melanin, the pigment. Okay? So Esau became known. And remember, the Lord told Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau, the Lord told Rebekah that two nations are in thy womb. So this Esau would grow up to be known as the Edomites, and Jacob would grow up to be known as the Israelites. As a matter of fact, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. When you go in Genesis 36 and 8, let's read that. Genesis 36 and 8, it says, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. So let's read that in the NLT. So Esau, also known as Edom, Settled in the hill country of Seir, Mount Seir. Okay? So now, when we go back to this document here, the master plan of the illuminated Rothschilds, right? Now, I'll show you how all this ties in. Ron Patton interviews Marion Knox. What you want to do is Google who Ron Patton is, Google who Marion Knox is. And I'm telling you that to save time. Um, when you see RP here, that's Ron Patton, right? Now I'm going to go to, go to the point of why I'm even reading this document here to show you that the Rothschilds know, and that the title of this video is clues of the Edomites, right? The Rothschild family in particular they know that their line goes back to Esau or Edom, the Edomites. So that's a super clue. That's a major clue of that not only are the Edomites still around, because Volker Malone said the Edomites were done away with. Not yet. The, the prophecy in Obadiah 1 and 18 hasn't been fulfill, fulfilled yet. Yes, the Edomites will be done away with, and that's pursuant to Obadiah 1 and 18, but it hasn't happened yet. The Edomites are still around. And I'm giving you a super clue. Let's begin with the Rothschild family. They know that their line is of the line of Esau, Edomites. And what, what, what do the Rothschild family look like? Well, let's type in Rothschild family. Rothschilds. Or oh, today, or Rothschild, Rothschild's family today. 
What do they look like? Huh? Let's read a little bit about it here. The Rothschilds are a European banking dynasty that have influenced the continent's political and economic history for almost 200 years. Today, the family's interests include banking and finance. Now, remember, we're talking about a nation of people. Every nation of people start with their top families. They're known as the elites. So basically, the Rothschilds would be an elite family of the, of the Edomites, the top, one of the top families of the Edomites. So you have just so you have the top, you got you got to have the bottom. So these so-called white people, their line doesn't go back to the Israelites because you have Israelites that uh, that will look like so-called white people. We teach this. Now, if their line don't go back to Israel, then their line go their line most assuredly would go back to the Edomites, unless they. Their line goes back to another nation. Because you can even the other nations, you can have them looking like Edomites. As in the Hamites, the Moabites. Because <laughs> the Edomites have mixed themselves among the people, just like the Israelites have mixed, them, mixed themselves among the people. Okay? But in most cases, the Edomites, all right, if they're, if they're, again, if they're not mixed with Israel, the Israelites, if they're not mixed with them, in most cases, the so-called white people, right, their line would go back to Esau, the Edomites, unless they're mixed with the Israelites, okay? Because you're going to have Israelites looking like so-called white people, and we teach this, all right? So the family's interests include banking and finance, real estate, Energy, agriculture, winemaking, and nonprofits. All right, so that's some of the capa some of the capacities in which the Rothschilds are involved in. Right. So now, I just wanted to read a little bit of that. So, we, for those of you hearing this for the first time, now you know about a little bit about this Rothschild family, and now you know where the term Rothschild goes back to. It goes back to. Mayam Shilbao, who changed his name to Rothschild because he became known as the Red Shield because he put up a red shield over his door to advertise his banking business. Right. So now let's go to images. There you go. These are your Rothschilds here. What do they look like, people? Huh? What do they look like? There's in the, the guy in the middle there. The guy in the middle there. That's David D. Rothschild. The guy in the middle there. The one to the far left, that's Jacob Rothschild. He just passed away. So he's gone. But the guy in the middle is very much alive. His name is David D. Rothschild. And what does he look like? Straight up so-called white man, a so-called white person. Now let me show you, according to the article, we're going to go back to the article. Master plan of illuminated Rothschilds. And we're going to go back to the section. RP, Ron Patton, asking Marion Knox a question. Can you be more specific as to the role the Rothschilds play into all of this? MK, as in Marion Knox, well, most people who are into conspiracy know the Rothschilds are the most powerful family in the world. Right, they, they would be your elites of the Edomite nation. Remember, this is a nation of people. Remember in Genesis it says, Two nations are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So this is a nation of people. So you have the top of the nation, and you have the bottom of the nation. So we're going to the top. We're dealing with the top to prove that the Edomites are still here. And we're starting with the Rothschild family. One of the most powerful families on the planet of an elite family of that nation of Edom. Okay? So, well, most people who are into conspiracy know the Rothschilds are the most powerful family in the world, but you really don't hear about the details relating to how they have set themselves up
to be king of the Jews and to usher in the Antichrist, which they're not of the Jews. The Rothschilds are not of the Jews. The term Jew goes back to Judah. Judah was the fourth born son of Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The Rothschilds are not of the seed of Jacob. They're of the seed of Esau. There was two sons Isaac had, Jacob and Esau. Judah was the fourth born son of Jacob. The term Jew goes back to Judah. So it would be impossible for the Rothschilds to be king of the Jews. Seeing that their line does not go back to Jacob, their line goes back to Esau. Remember, there was that separation between Jacob and Esau. Uh, they have set themselves up to be king of the Jews and to usher in the Antichrist. By the way, there's many Antichrists. The Bible tells us this, 1 John 2 and 18. You can go read it for yourself. There are many Antichrists. Antichrist simply means against the Lord's anointed. <clears throat> Who's the Lord's anointed? The nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. It was the Rothschilds who financially backed the nation of Israel. That is true. The nation, the, well, the, no, no, well, they're not a nation, they're a state. There was a state. That's not a nation. Okay, that's a state created by the Rothschilds. It said the nation of Israel. No, the true nation of Israel, all right, the true nation of Israel, which the Heavenly Father created, they're in exile right now. The majority of them are in exile, beginning with the so-called Negroes, all the way down to the so-called Mexicans. Nation of Israel, 12 tribes. Okay, so the Rothschilds did not start some nation of Israel. The Rothschilds created a state, a state of Israel. Big difference. Israel is a state. Okay. The nation of Israel is complete with 12 tribes. We don't see no 12 tribes over there in what is called the state of Israel today. We don't see no 12 tribes. All we hear about is the Jews. That's just the southern kingdom. Let's give them that. The southern kingdom, which consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's three tribes. What about the rest of the tribes, as in the northern kingdom? That completes the nation of Israel. We don't hear about that over there. All we hear about is the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. What about the northern kingdom, led by the tribe of Ephraim? We don't hear about that. So that's not the nation of Israel. That's the state of Israel. And it was created in 1948. May 14th, 1948, and it's not, the state of Israel is not, doesn't line up with the prophecy in the book of Isaiah, the second chapter, where it says that when Israel uh, is, comes back as a nation, uh, nations will learn war no more, okay, because there's still wars going on. And that's just one example of proof that proves that the state of Israel is not according to the, the prophecy of the nation of Israel coming back as a people. The state of Israel created in 1948 was not a fulfillment of that. Where it says in Isaiah 14 and 1, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. That didn't happen in 1948. Because if that if 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 it would have happened in 1948 you would have had all 12 tribes there flourishing you would have had king david there you would have had the kingdom of heaven there you would have had yahweh shai right <laughs> in rulership so many prophecies prophecies would have been fulfilled if if uh the true nation of israel was established in 1948 so many prophecies would have been fulfilled they're still not fulfilled. You would have had uh, Jerusalem sitting on 12 foundations of stones, precious stones. You would have had the city of Jerusalem with three gates on each side. You would have had uh, the streets of gold in, in, in uh, Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem. You'd be able to look at your own reflex, reflection in the street. We actually had a brother whose wife had a dream of that. She was projected into the kingdom. How Jerusalem's really going to look. So 1948 was a joke. Okay. But it was, uh, but what is true is 
It was a state created by the Rothschilds. Absolutely. They buy, but like it says here, they backed it up. They financed it, right? The Rothschilds who financially backed the nation of Israel, so, which is the state of Israel, let's say it correctly, so they could eventually set up a throne for the Antichrist in Jerusalem, and many Antichrists, again. The Rothschilds themselves are Antichrist. They're, they're against the Lord's anointed. Read on, it says, And yet during World War II, their money and resources were used to kill millions of Jews, but these were seen as the expendable Jews. They were not Jews. All right, they were also of the seed of Esau. Okay, now were they Israelites maybe scattered among them? Possibly. But... The majority of them were not Jews. The majority of them were Edomites. Okay. Um, but these were seen as the expendable Jews from the house of Jacob. Remember, these guys have the audacity to use the Bible as a blueprint to take over the world. Well, that's the most powerful book on the planet Earth. Hell, if you're going to take over the world, you, 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 you damn sure want to be up on that Bible. Okay. But let's keep reading. It says, let me give you some background information. On one level, the Rothschilds secretly call themselves the House of David, which they're not. Again, David goes back to the seed of Jacob. They don't come out the seed of Jacob. Uh, they secretly call themselves the House of David from the tribe of Judah, which they're not. Now, Rothschild, translated from German to English, means red shield. And I told you this. During biblical times, the Edomites' fortress was the red rocks of Petra. Now, Petra, to this very day, you can Google Petra and you'll see remnants of a society that once flourished there. Petra was one of the cities back in the ancient time of the Edomites. Petra, Bozra, okay, is another example, Bozra. Now, if you look at the ruins of Petra, you can see they closely resemble the skyscrapers of today. So that's another clue of who the Edomites are. The same, one who, the same ones who build these skyscrapers that you see now were the same ones who built those buildings in Petra back in the day. Okay, so that's another clue. During, the, during biblical times, the Edomites' fortress was the red rocks of Petra. Esau, the twin brother of Jacob, was described as red and hairy. Well, he's actually red, all right, like a hairy garment, because back then you had garments made of animal skins that were dyed red. So that's the true understanding of that. But the baby was red. It wasn't necessarily hairy. The baby was red because the color of the the color that the baby's skin showed was the blood that showed forth through their skin because their skin lacked melanin. Okay. So it says, the, uh, the Edomites' fortress was the red rocks of Petra. Esau, the twin brother of Jacob, was described as red and hairy. So this information fits perfectly with what survivors have been telling me, that on a deeper level, the Rothschilds are also claiming to be the descendants of Esau. Now remember, Esau became Edom, Genesis 36 and 8. Esau is the father of the Edomites. Let me show you that. Esau is the father of the Edomites. Genesis 36 and 8, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Look at the subheading, Descendants of Esau. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Mount Seir is their home. And there's another clue. Mount Seir was a rocky hilly region in that land and the Edomites was synonymous with living in the rocks like we just read the red rocks of Petra living in caves living in the rocks now these people they love to go uh, spelunking I believe the term is when they go to the caves and explore the caves that's not really in our spirit to do us Israelites, beginning with so-called black men all the way down. That's not in our spirit to do. Go exploring caves and shit. But that's what the Edomites get into. 
They get into sp spelunking. I believe that's the term for it. Exploring caves. They, they get into climbing mountains. All right? That's their spirit. Remember what the Lord told Rebecca. Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So that's one of their customs. Man, another word for man is custom. That's one of their customs, to climb rocks, to climb mountains, okay? Just like a goat. <laughs> By the way, that's their symbol, the symbol of the Edomites, the goat, okay? Our symbol is the sheep, as in the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Their symbol is the goat, okay? So it says uh, that on a deeper level, the Rothschilds are also claiming to be the descendants of Esau, and thus are really from the house or tribe of Esau. Yeah, they're the Edomites that the Bible speaks of. What they are trying to do is to get the birthright back from the house of Jacob, who are the real Jews. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. That is true. That's why they have something called a New World Order. The New World Order is an attempt of the Edomites led by the Rothschilds because the, the Rothschilds are spearheading this New World Order. It's, it's a, an attempt by them to try to get the birthright that they lost to our forefather, Jacob. You can read about that in Genesis. All right, Genesis, the 27th chapter. So that's true. So this is proof that they're the Edomites, beginning with the top banking family, the Rothschild family. So the Edomites are very much around. Vocab Malone said the Edomites were done away with. Here I'm reading an article that lets you know that um, uh, the, the Rothschilds claim to be of, at the same time they claim to be Jews, they also claim to be of the descendants and house of Esau. And what they're trying to do is to get the birthright back from the house of Jacob, who are the real Jews. However, the book of Obadiah talks about the destruction of the Edomites in the last days. Yeah, that's Obadiah 1 and 18. That hasn't happened yet. That hasn't happened yet. In the, it says in the last days. No, that's going to happen in our kingdom after they serve us for, for a thousand years of slavery. So there's some, uh, how you say, there's some bones in, in this, uh, which is a little lie here and there in this uh, document here. But there are also truth in this document, such as they're trying to get back their birthright. That's what the New World Order is all about. The, the wicked elite of Esau, the Edomites, trying to get back their birthright so they can rule the planet Earth in wickedness. But it ain't going to happen. Yahweh Shah is going to put an end to that. Okay? So, basically, I'm going to end it there. This has been Clues of the Edomites. And a major clue is this document. And you can reference this in your teaching when people try to, because that's the elephant in the room. You know, these Edomites are starting to wake up and find out the real deal. And they're starting to play the plausible deniability game, saying they're not the Edomites. Yes, they are the Edomites. The so-called white people are the Edomites, unless their line goes back to so-called black people, which you have a lot of... Um, Edomites or Edomite looking Israelites, which their line would have go, have to be have to go back to so called uh, black people black people as it were. Okay? And we've done tons of videos on this. Alright, so there you go. Clues of the Edomites. Okay, so on that note, on to the next one.